Hi all you beautiful friends. Let's do our Sunday shining, number six. I'm actually not prepared, so we're just going to see what happens. Um, I think this is a good experiment because <coughs> Yeah, I'm just getting that this this now. That uh, it's by going into the nothingness that it all comes. So we're so used to <coughs> so warm. It's beautiful, beautiful autumn day. Lovely and warm. Just sit down. <coughs> I don't know if I'm in the camera here. Maybe just get it down a bit. You can't. I'm out here with the sheep. Are. Oh, I just get it down a bit. Mm, yeah. So beautiful. <coughs> okay, so let's try here. I know the beauty of Mother Earth. Uh, yeah, so, so <coughs> it's uh, it's actually by going into the nothingness that uh, we discover uh, the greatness. So that's what I just got so clearly now, because I was, I sort of been thinking, okay, what to what to share with you, and should I should I ask you to give me some some subjects, something to talk about? And now that the sun came out, it's so beautiful out here. I can do my sunbathing, <laughs> and my mind sort of said, but you've got nothing to say, really. You don't know what to say. And now I can see that that's what's beautiful about this, to just just, let, just uh, invite you and myself to feel the nothingness. And that's what we feel, I sense, in the beginning when we go within. We start letting go of the human condition, all that has been filling our lives. <coughs> in the beginning it can feel empty. And in the, in the Eastern tradition, uh, it is into the nothingness. You go into the nothingness. You empty yourself. And there is not a God. In, in, uh, in Buddhism, there's not a God. And I sense that uh, with, with the, the Western faith, and many, many actually indigenous people believe that there is a creator. I mean, most do. So when you come into the nothingness, where you feel the emptiness within you, this still place, you start sensing that there is someone in there. There is a creator. And there is something, there is a power that, that is, in, there is the essence of all of this. And, and whatever works for you is, is fine, so there's nothing, it's not to say there's anything wrong with Buddhism, but I just think it's so wonderful to sense that there is a pre sorry, there is a presence when you allow yourself to go deep within yourself into this still place, I sense there is a presence. And the thing is, that's me. I'm connecting with my deeper self with my true self and so are you and your true self and your deep self is one with mine 
although we have our identity, we have our uniqueness, which is so beautiful. And that's also, I think, uh, just talking about these religious traditions and and the, 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 the whole uh, monastic uh, tradition of going into a monastery and stripping off all your all your stuff and and looking alike, shaving off all your hair, and everybody looks alike. Men and women, they all look alike. It's it has its place, and it was necessary beforehand to do that. Because you simply could not find this, you c couldn't find God. Many, most couldn't without doing that. But that is not the way for us, as I see it, and that's what I feel is so beautiful about life. That you are your uniqueness, with or without hair, with or without clothes, whatever you want to dress yourself with, whatever you want to, however you wish to express yourself in this world is all the juiciness and the loveliness that you bring and as I see it this is what we must unfold so if it's true for you to go to be a, a nun and, be, and go go that path it, it's not to say anything critical about it uh, it's just to say that's where I feel really we, we're being asked to shine our light to unfold all the specialness that we are and, and and to come into the to, to the sensory us also so so whatever um, as I've been saying whatever you love to do do it uh, sing dance paint jump <laughs> lie still whatever uh, you you feel guided to express in whatever way you do you feel is right for you start doing it And, and it will come, it, it will come uh, when we have spent enough time in the stillness. Uh, but as I see it, we, I mean, you can ask what happened to, to human beings, what happened to us? What, what's, what's, what's gone wrong? What happened was that we, we were these, we were one with God and we knew our magnificence and we were magnificent and we were unfolding each and every one of us has been this magnificent being and and, know, and knew it and has been unfolding uh, I mean so much color shape uh, music um, and in in the energy the energy world, the unseen, we've been, we've been shining our light so bright and we knew we were the light and then we went into amnesia and that's what happened when we came to earth and we've, we've, we've agreed to do this so be, from being a king you became this little beggar, this little uh, victim from your great coming from your greatness and your joy and your love and your all this unfolding you, you, you were taken into this like a jail you were imprisoned in your own and even self-hatred and and lack of you, you forgot everything we forgot everything so and in this very dark place that we've been in for so long we tried to mimic the greatness by doing it on the physical realm, in the physical realm, so we, um, with money, with with physic, with power, ah! um, uh, whatever we could do, uh, we tried to, to to shine this light that we used to do in in a completely divine way. We tried to do it in this world. And it becomes very ugly <laughs> because when when what you do has no spirit, it's it can be nice in the beginning and look beautiful in the beginning. But when there's no love behind it, the, the spirit is missing. The love is missing. It it becomes ugly, and we become ugly. And and as it says in the Bible, um, the tree shall be known by its fruits. So. 
uh, but, but this was the big lie that we came into. We thought, because we'd forgotten all this and we knew deep down there's something missing, that's what we, we figure out as we live here. We can feel there's something, there's something t totally missing and there's something totally wrong. Uh, because that greatness and enormous powerful uh, state of being is, was lost. So we try with all our fame and all our, look at me, look how great and how wonderful and rich and whatever, big car. We tried with all this, a big education, I'm a doctor, I'm a doctor of a doctor and <coughs> whatever we could do. And, uh, and now we've come, we can see on the, on the earth that the, all, we can, all we can do is let it go because it's, it's not going to get us anywhere. It's, it's, uh, and it's not our true self. It's not our true magnificence. It's, it's the worldly magnificence. So it's all falling away. It's all falling apart. And, and um, yeah, I just got this image yesterday. Because uh, we're waking up to the fact that we've actually not been ourselves and we've been living in a lie where everything we thought was important, we realize is not important at all. And it's actually just, it's, it's just wasting, we're just wasting our energy when we keep pursuing it. So we were, and we're in this sort of void where we're conf confused because we thought everything, everything that was true before, we thought that was true and it's, and it's not. So everything we thought we were is not us, and it's not really it's not useful. And so, what happens for the, the ones of us who rest, who are who are who are not wanting to awaken, and who don't go with the flow of awakening, and just let it go, listen to our hearts, and just let all this go. We who do that, we move forward quickly, and life becomes fun and beautiful very quickly. But the ones who are holding on are suffering. Um, and so I just got this, uh, I got this image, <coughs> or sort of a, a, what's it called, an analogy. You, you imagine that you have been, you've been depressed for a long time, and you're, you're stuck. And uh, you, you join a group of depressed people, whether it's some sort of self-help group or something. And you, you're sitting in this group, and it's sort of in a darkish room. Everything is grey and dark and depressed. And everybody's sharing their story about how this happened to them. And so each gets to talk. And every time you hear someone talk, you get <laughs> you get even more depressed. Because that's all we, and let's say I'm in this group, we'll, that we are in this group. That's all we feel is this depression and this lack of hope and this lack of love for ourselves or anything it's like everything has gone dark and, and and in this room there's no there's no way out there's no door you can't leave all you can do is to sit here and listen to this and feel how you're going deeper and deeper into the into the pain and the suffering and the darkness and the, you just you just, you finally just wish to die just not exist because it's so bad and and then one, one of us realizes that okay, if I keep staying in this, in this awareness, in, if I stay in this state of being, I'm going to wither up and just die here. Nothing's going to happen. This is going to end in a dead end. And, and how can I find the way out when there's no doors? And they just keep going on, and everything just keeps getting darker and darker, and I feel darker and darker. And that's when the awakening happens, when you suddenly turn your attention away from all these bad stories and all those closed doors, or all that uh, imprisonment and darkness, and you, you step into your heart, and suddenly the whole room changes. It's lit up, and there's no walls and there's no doors. You're in the middle of paradise. You are there already. And, and you can see there's, <laughs> there's only beauty and love and peace and harmony. And you are that. 
and all it is is you taking your attention away from oh my goodness oh my god oh yes I did that too yeah I, I tried that too and all this state of being darkness victimhood and you step out of it by stepping deeper in you don't take a door out to some sunny beach or some lovely country or some nice old lady whatever some church there's no door out there's no way out other than going deeper into you and when you take that step you dare to and what you're doing is you say to yourself this cannot be right this this cannot be I didn't come to earth to experience this and live this way it, it, it's just kind of, <laughs> something's wrong so I'm gonna do something I've never done before instead of focusing outward I'm going to step in and that's when it happens you step into the kingdom of God and realize oh my god I'm actually sitting in paradise heaven on earth is right here and I'm sitting here and the animals are around me and the Sun is baking on my skin and I hear this trickling water I everything is beautiful and harmonious and alive around me and I'm completely alive and there's no such such thing as depression because it doesn't ex where, where would that I don't feel it anymore it's gone because it was a lie I'm not depressed I don't hate myself and and that's where you when you step into your the person the being you used to be we used to be in, in the heavenly realms our spirit we step into our spirit being in our physical body and that's what's so special about what's happening on earth now it's never happened before and I think it's never happened on any planet but a physical as physical beings we're experiencing death we're experiencing as all these near-death experiences all these people are, are talking about and explaining what it's like to step into heaven we're experiencing it in our life in our bodies that, it, that the world is completely filled with love and peace and harmony beauty joy oneness and it's easy living is easy it's not difficult it's graceful and easy and all you really have to do is breathe and be be aware that you are life itself and that all that beauty around you is mirroring yourself you are that what you see and it all happens with that tiny shift so the people around you are gone you're not there <laughs> it's all gone and and um, and one by one as we experience this and step out of that state of being of course we lift we're going into the higher dimensions we're stepping out of that world that we were in which was all what they say in quantum physics there is the, uh, the world around you is only mirroring the way you think you're creating it all the time with your thoughts oh the world is a struggle the world is a oh god you know we have to get through this <laughs> all those thoughts manifest as soon as you think them or just feel them you believe that this is the way as you believe so it will be so we surrender when we're in p enough pain and that's what uh, usually happens I mean if you don't wake up uh, in your daily life by bits of pain you're gonna get a lot of pain <laughs> and then finally you'll wake up uh, and realize oh my goodness uh, and 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 it's it's really not it's not our fault it was all meant to be some say it, it, it got much worse than it was ever planned it got became very 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 bad being on earth all the suffering was was horrendous and it was never been, meant to be that bad but now it's it is really gone it's over uh, so it's e much easier this this process is much easier um, uh, and of course that depressed state of being is something we've learnt because as you see a little child or you see the animals the little animals uh, growing up we are 
completely um, we we are everything we experience as little children is imprinted into our mind and even just in a as a fetus in your mother's womb uh, her energy and her way of thinking that is completely embedded into us into deep into our physical being and as we we forget everything from the heavenly realm and we step into this world we are already conditioned as as we're born and then we see our parents <laughs> what they're doing and everything is just um, we, we become so deeply affected and programmed by our family our uh, our world so we we were we, we were victims because we had no connection with our greatness so we didn't realize that we are actually completely in control and we are God him, him himself and that's what we realize when we step step out of this so it's um, and and uh, yeah so things come I wanted to say actually let's just take a few moments just breathing because the energy you're feeling now, as you step into your heart, you are sharing in this video with people who are watching it. So let's just let's just breathe and and just feel this how we sink into our heart, into our inner being. So just focus on breathing slowly and deeply. And it can be so slow that you hardly feel it coming through your nose or your mouth. Just so slow and soft. And some say to just focus on the out breath and just really feel you're pushing the air out with your belly. Push, 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 push. And then naturally your lungs will take in the air. Just breathe like this for a moment. Just sense the softness of your body and your breath. Sense how you are aware. You're aware of my voice. And you're aware of your being. And if you close your eyes, it's easier to just feel yourself. And just feel how with every breath you sink into your heart. Into this golden light that is your light. God's light. Feel the emptiness and the stillness. How everything becomes very, very simple. Very peaceful. Like you're going through a forest and you come to this place where there's a little clearing where the light shines down, it's warm and protected. And there's a little, there's a little uh, water stream. You can hear this water just running softly. And there's little plants swaying around the water. And you can see the glistening of the sun in the water. And you're just lying there in the sun, feeling the sun's rays on your skin. Just this calm, beautiful place is in our hearts. So that is our energy, that is our being. And we can sense how this light, this golden light from our hearts, spreads out into our bodies into every cell, all the blood flowing through our veins becomes golden blood. It goes up into our brain, our brain becomes a golden brain. Everything becomes golden and soft. And out of our heart we just let this golden ray of light just shine out to all the people watching this video, <coughs> to this little group and just sense how we're 
bathing each other in this love, this presence, this light. So as you feel the light coming from you and into everybody's lives, bathing them, soothing them, helping them, their light is shining onto you. So we're all giving and receiving this beautiful light. So as we just feel this relaxation and feel how we are taken care of and we are loved and we are contributing with our own beautiful light. We can continue the video. So we're all sharing, we're all giving and sharing and receiving. Sometimes there's, there's so many words and too many words. So these videos are Sometimes I speak a lot, <laughs> usually I speak a lot, share a lot from my life. But what I'm really inviting you is, is into your own heart. So, yeah, I hope you feel this. So, uh, let me just take this last thing before we do our Gabriel message. And is it, it is what Jesus said, uh, which is the main message that he gave us all. Uh, it is the greatest message. Love your God. Love your Father with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, and all your will, or something like that. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. And that's really all you need to do. And I think it's so helpful and so powerful uh, as we awaken and we can feel this emptiness and stillness as we step into our heart. And also a lack of um, maybe wanting to do anything or understanding what should, where am I going. As we are here to remember these words and what is it he's saying? Love God, which is the essence of who you are. It's, it's, it's all over. God's presence is everywhere. It's our creator. It's the being of light that brought us here, that has unfolded. So it's... Um, so it's, it, it is us, it's the essence of who we are, but it's also there. So it's, it's oneness, but it's also, I mean, Jesus is asking us to direct our love towards our Creator, our Father, our Mother, whatever, however you want to say it, see it. So as we are in this very still, quiet place, we can just focus on feeling love. How does that, it feel when I feel love? And use a little use a little flower. Let's go find a flower. Or a sheep or something. Let's go find a sheep. If we can. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The crows are busy. So find something <clears throat> and just feel your love for it. Could be your dog, could be a flower, could be the, the sky. And just feel how it feels to love. 
And if you can't feel the love, just feel the joy and direct it towards something. And this is what Jesus is asking us to do to him, to, 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 to God. So sense how your creator is right here looking at you and feel how you love this creator. And why is this so important? Well, because that's what heals us. And that, that, is, that is the medicine to do this, to, to feel it's all about, you don't have to go to a church, you don't have to do anything. All is you need to do is just feel the love and feeling the gratitude for life is really very much the same. Feel how grateful you are for life itself. And when you're in that state of being, you are really one with God. Because you're sending your love to God and you're sensing how you are, you are one with God. The love, and it's like in our relationships when you feel love for someone and you're We've become very good at this, my husband and me. Holding each other with authenticity, authentic love. Just the pure love in our hearts. Not all, not all the words, I love you, oh, you're so great, you're so beautiful. Just holding each other tight and feeling the love and you can feel how you melt together. And that's what Jesus was trying to teach us melt into God's love by feeling your love by feeling your love and that's when we become the, the giver and that's when we become God so it's, just, it's so magical it sounds so simple love your God with all your strength practicing this is the greatest and of course when we meet our neighbor the chance of us not loving him is really really little and loving ourselves comes naturally because we are love. So it's so beautiful, it's so powerful. If, uh, if you use any, anything from the Bible, that's really all we need. Love your God, feel how you love God. Just feel it. So it's so beautiful. So we're going to do a Gabriel message now, after that little talk. So let's get the book. So while we're looking into these little beautiful flowers, we'll find our Gabriel message. And So what came to me was uh, 27. And it is called, Your prayers are a beacon calling to you the light and wisdom you seek. Dear one, just as a ship at sea can find the land in its seeking through the beacon light at sh on shore, so is the power of your prayers. The guiding light of your prayers sets an intention for your life that leads the way to all you require for an abundant, healthy and joy-filled life. Prayer is in alignment with God's energy. It connects you to the abundant source where all is provided. Prayer is not something you save until there is a dire need. Prayer is a way of aligning your thoughts to create the opening for miracles in your life. When you pray, you are sending out a powerful thought that acts like a beacon light. 
this thought note not only attracts what you are asking for, it sets a pattern of energy for the highest good in your life. It increases your conscious awareness of the power of great possibilities. Prayer creates a shift in your attitude so you can be a magnet for your good. Your prayer does not have to be an elaborate ritual. Simple words that work for you are the easiest way to attune yourself to God. Prayer acts as a reminder that there is a higher power available to assist you in every area of your life. And there comes a practice. Knowing that an attitude of gratitude can lift your awareness, it is often helpful to begin your prayers to give thanks for that which already exists in your life. Proclaim divine order is another powerful prayer when you don't know what else to ask for. When divine order exists in your life, you live in harmony, love and abundant joy. Sometimes God seems very far away and too vast to comprehend. At those times calling forth your guardian angel is like calling on a friend, someone to talk to and pour out the deepest feelings in your heart. Know that it is all right for you to ask for what you want. The abundant resource of spirit is equal to every demand. And you deserve to be happy and abundantly blessed. It is often helpful to know the qualities you desire to attract to you when you pray. If you are lonely and asking for a mate, know clearly what you want in a life companion. These qualities come include, could include a deep heart connection, understanding and harmony. When you ask directly for the qualities behind the physical attributes, it allows for a greater opening in your consciousness so you can receive at a deeper level. Visualization can also assist your prayers. Imagine that you are a lighthouse on a rocky shore, a beacon of light. Feel the expansiveness as your light reaches out into the world around you. Know that your light is attracting your good to you and that you are assisting others by your beacon. When you be become this light in your thoughts, it expands your consciousness and prepares the way for you to receive even greater light. It creates a new level of calming faith within you. So let your light shine. You are meant to be this beacon of light shining forth into the world for all to see. Each person has his ability to shine because each person is a part of the light, love and wisdom which is God. When you recognize this power within you, it will create the energy for miracles to occur. Believe that all the good in the universe is available for you, just because you are a beloved child of the creator of all that is. As you shine your light into the world, know that you are not alone. The abundant energy of God is pouring into you to assist you in keeping your light strong. Know that the angels are also available as companions on your path, ready to assist you when you ask. You are a magnet for your good when you remember. Your prayers are a beacon calling to you the light and wisdom you seek. Okay, so this was wonderful. Uh, let's do our card. understanding. So, uh, seen in the uh, context of what we've been talking about, uh, that's what grows of course in us because we are, we become aware of what happened to us and that, 
that image or analogy, I think it's called, I gave you about the depressed group is, is of course, is a picture of earthly life as it became a very depressed state of being where we, where we were sort of locked in. And when we dare to take the step, instead of copying everyone else around us, dare to ask ourselves, what can I do to, to get away from this? How can I, uh, how can I leave this? Uh, that's when this whole awakening happens and we realize that we are actually in he we are actually in heaven. Heaven is here. It's a state of being and we can step into it. And that's when all the understanding comes, of course. Oh, that's what's happened. That's why I've been in hell <laughs> all my life. That's why it's been so difficult. Because I haven't been in a in a an ungodly place, a place where there was very, very, very little of God's light. So I didn't feel at home and I wasn't functioning because I am God. That's my that's my true being. So of course I was suffering. So, yeah, there was uh, more things I wanted to share, but I can do that next Sunday. And, yeah, so this was very wonderful. And as you saw, I actually had some things written on a piece of paper, so I was not completely unprepared. But it was a, a lovely, a wonderful little practice to just be still. Uh, and I loved also the, 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 the breathing, the quiet, the sharing of energy we did. So, uh Although I had some things on my mind I would share, uh, a lot of it, it, it really was shaped by, by the Lord. And that's what's so beautiful. The more we surrender, just like uh, the person who surrendered to her heart in the depressed group, it's all about surrendering, really. Surrendering into love. So just, just sinking into, just letting it all go. Our problem is that we're holding on to something that's not good for us. So just let it go. So there's nothing active we really have to do. So when we surrender and say, okay, I don't, and it also says in the Bible, don't worry about what you're going to say because we'll give you all the words. And that's really what our whole life is, is becoming more and more. Just let go and let God. So have a really, really love-filled and... Uh, heavenly Sunday and the week coming so may you every moment feel your own beautiful inner golden light spreading out more and more and thank you for all you share see you my friend bye